Hey everyone, this here is the LEGO Ninjago City Market Set. It has 6,163 pieces, and I built most of it live over on my Twitch channel. It cost me $370 US. The set comes with 21 minifigures, which I'll focus on later. First, I want to talk about the main build, the main thing that you're paying for, which is 64 studs by 32 at its base. That is two full-sized base plates. Not the, not the huge ones, but the regular size ones. So the size, it takes up the space of two regular modular buildings. And it doesn't cheat that space too much. There's a tiny, tiny bit of gap of, of waterway at the front, but a lot of that is overlapped. And at the back, once again, a small bit of waterway, and there's some overlap of that up above as well. And a lot of the actual build comes up very, very close to that. So you don't have the situation where there's a huge alleyway or something like that that's, that's wasting a lot of the space. There is some blank, blank space in the middle, but as you can see, this actually looks pretty respectable from all angles. It does not have a particularly camera unfriendly angle. I would even suggest that it may look a little bit better from the back, especially if you start to put some minifigures in there. I just like seeing the extra color up there. But see, even around the side, like none of this is designed to be hidden away. So it really is the most, I think the most accessible of the Ninjago City sets to date. And it is designed to be attached to modular buildings or to other things that use the same modular building sort of technic connection, including of course, all of the other Ninjago City sets to date. To look at details, I wanna start from the top this time. And I'm also gonna go right to left. So we'll begin over here. It's a little sushi spot, just a street vendor that happens to be four stories up. This looks really good. You know, it, it's very compact, but it has good detailing to it. I like the shaping of the roof. I really like this because it just looks so realistic. The little roll up door style of window. We've got a menu out front, nice colors with the dark red and the teal, and it's pretty detailed on the inside too. Granted, it's a little bit difficult to see that detail, but you can see a pot up on the wall on the right. They've got condiments there for, for sauces. There's the small stove over here on the left-hand side and the lower countertop for food preparation. It's pretty proper and still has enough room for one figure to be inside. The color scheme's a little bit eclectic, I guess, because they have the trans bright green colored lights on both sides and the window frames are sand blue. I don't know how noticeable this is to you, but there is some color variation once again in the dark reds. This spot also has the requisite seafood reference large 3D sign with the caricature octopus. It looks pretty good. It's shaped nicely with just a couple of the tentacles to hold on to some chopsticks and also a a frying pan there. The sign going across is in a lime green colored, just regular flat curve of roller coaster track. And it has some, some nice ways of attaching uh, the, the tiles here that have the stickers on them just to make sure that they don't, they don't rotate around. So they're not going to be freely moving about too easily. And then across from that, you've got some antenna structures and that's all on top of the all important toilet. Kind of the one thing that anybody cares about on this entire set just has a, uh, uh, poster off to the side. Interestingly, interestingly, a lot of the window panes that have the stickers on them like this are transparent purple, and that gives you a nice color from around the non-decorated side and also puts more of those pieces in that color into circulation. Another banner around the side here. They go for a lot of signage. This one's actually built up in 3D. And now we look inside the toilet, which is much more difficult than you would expect, especially given that this is, again, the thing that most people are concerned with in this entire set. So you're able to remove the roof to let some light in there, and that does help you to attempt to put a minifigure in there, but it's just difficult to get in there. Even, even at this, you would like to be able to remove the whole thing. You can remove this, this floor and move that around, but ultimately, yeah, even for minifigs, it's, it's like an angular access right here to, to get into the space. The toilet bowl itself is formed with a relatively obscure part, but it's really nice part usage makes for a very good shape. There is a a plunger off to the side over there and there's also a sink with a small basin over here but the most important thing is just this lever you push on that and you can already see that there is a brown tile and it's attached to the the flushing lever over here you also have a little bit of tp off to the side which is done well but the most important thing again is that you push on the lever and the brown tile goes down 
Around the back, if you flip this open, you can see the mechanism for that, which is pretty simple, but it's, it's nice and compact and definitely does its job. And ultimately, the tile just comes out down here in the main waterway of the entirety of Ninjago City. There's a whole system of chutes that <laughs> direct it down under here and then ultimately down here and straight out the side. You can flush as many of two of these at once. There's also a stairway back here to allow you to get up to that level in the first place. And this is a strange little corner. It looks like there's a flower and a candle and then the new printed dark blue colored ninja nano fig. I don't know exactly what that references. The poster next to it though obviously references the mech races from Dragon's Rising. Here's a little musical mastery reference and that's appropriate because next is a bridge that takes you across to the entry of the karaoke bar or karaoke bar. That's Laffy's and it's run by Dareth these days. As usual, lots of uh, advertisements and references along the railing. They try to pack in as many of those as they can. I really like this. I just like how it it's very bright. I like the color scheme, but I also especially like that it's at least partially brick built. Got some interesting shaping with tiles put inside of the one by two by five. Yeah, one by two by five uh, trans purple bricks there. And then, you know, some, some nice bright coloring for this effectively like it's kind of like a club. The floor above this is easy to remove cleanly because it's mostly just toweled over with a handful of studs. And in fact, you can also remove all of this, which is just going to make it easier for me to show you the interior details. So this one has good access to pose minifigures in there, even though, you know, the walkways are limited in size, but you can, you can make it work. The pool table is an excellent build. I mean, it feels a little bit loose, it rattles a little bit, but it's so, so compact and does not rely on stickers for details. You know, you got the corner pockets on there and also side pockets. You can actually slide the representations, the studs that represent the balls around and you got the, the cue sticks up against the wall there as well. It's, it's really good. You know, it's just clever, a clever build and, and a joy to put together. Dartboard, on the other hand, is just a sticker, but you know, the size is appropriate. You got kind of a small bar over here and Dareth, they use the, the, uh, the cast piece to represent a cloth in his hand for drying off the, the stemware and the glasses and things. That's a clever use just putting it on backwards. It's also an excellent jukebox over here. It's small, doesn't have a tremendous amount of detail, but I appreciate that it is indeed small. It feels like it's just about minifig scaled. And to do that again, without any stickers is just satisfying. It just feels really good. Simple, but effective curved window work here. And then back in the back is the actual karaoke stage, which just has enough room for one single person to go there. A couple lights up above and then there's a, uh, a painting or a photo, excuse me, on the, on the wall. And that's just it. There's not a whole lot of stuff in here given the size of the place, but I think, I think it's about right. Cause you want to be able to put figures around doing stuff and enjoying whoever's putting on the performance and, you know, playing the game and yeah, this works. Returning to the outside, let's go back to the wide mezzanine back here. And I'll look at that from the other side. These barriers made of just single garage door pieces in trans bright green are kind of brilliant. I mean, they work just fine for that more modern kind of feel like, like glass railings and getting once again, a, a piece in a color that we haven't had it in before, I think is very exciting. I'd, I'd love to see what's going to end up being done with these parts. They're just so, so bright. It's one of, one of the, uh, one of the, the most interesting, most eye-catching colors I think that Lego has in their palette right now. This is a nice color scheme too. It surprised me with the teal, bright green, and then just orange. You've got the, the, rep, the shrine representation there in the center for decorative purposes only. Um, this is nicely done, just a very simple way to put a map of the place with the little you are here indicator there as well. And then that brings us to another modern building. This one uses the creator expert or icon style of uh, relatively new large fender pieces that have anti-studs on the other side. And though there's a little bit of gapping up in here, it just doesn't really bother me. This this is nice. You know, it's it's something unique. It's something different. They got the 45 degree angle with the door that's operatable here. You know, just easy to step right on up. 
and walk in there and then up above is a curved window instead and then it's topped off with more curves this is another situation where it easily could have looked bad around the back because it's intended to be just a facade to look good from the front of the building but this looks all appropriate i really like the girder work over here that's that's built up with genuine pieces rather than relying on preformed pieces or anything it gives you some nice interesting shaping again from around the back of the building like this is a nice visual design feature uh, for us huge figures we can access this upper little interior space from the side easily you know easily enough it's still difficult to put a figure in there because you're, you're not able to easily remove the top and it's just a very compact little space which is the the personal office of Cyrus Borg. So he's got his computer there, a lamp, and it's just a basic desk in the corner. His access is from the side over here, which is also a little bit difficult for us to get to from the outside. But uh, since he is in his chair, they did make sure that he had just enough room to fit in there. I think probably this window pane should be uh, swapped around because it does kind of just kind of <laughs> compact him in there just a little bit. But the idea is that he would get in there through this door, which in turn has access to an elevator. So he would come in from the, from the lower floor, go out through this door, and then get onto this elevator, use the controls there. This goes up and it just has a small catch. Then he gets off. And then when it's time to go back down, you can just rotate this and it slides down. That's fine. This lower floor of this section of building is intended to be consumer accessible. It's a consumer tech store, the Borg store. So they've got a couple of phones on display down below, probably some like wrist data pad thing in the middle, and then some power packs, I guess some extended battery units up top. The next structure over is the upper landing for the cable pulled gondola system that is able to transport people from the left side to the right and also from the lower floor to the upper. And this just happens to have a beautiful sakura tree up on the top of it. It's actually a pretty nice build for how few pieces it has and how small it is. It has a really nice shape to it. So I, I do like that. Uh, nice little, little wood framing design like the the idea of it here but this whole thing requires so so much uh, so much technic building inside of it so much structure is involved in there and it's also part of a little bit of the part of the the structure to keep the whole uh, the whole Ninjago City Market sets together when you pick it up so it doesn't sag in the middle, it doesn't bend in the middle. Everything has to be tightened together from left to right and top to bottom. So there's a whole lot that goes into this ultimately just to allow you to have access to basically one person. Let me actually show you how that how that works. I moved it up to here, but the the knob to control that it's just a basic winch over here. So you're just gonna let it down. It's very slow methodical it's a tiny bit at a time and there's also a knob down here that needs to be turned and what this does is retract the walkway so there's actually not enough space for this to go by so it's kind of like a like a a drawbridge but for pedestrians so you gotta watch out for that when you want this to go past going in either direction first you need to cut off access you know, pedestrian access uh, there, there's so much mechanism that goes into that. So much technic building. It's It has a bunch of gears and everything. It's a very, very technical build. And again, just so much bulk and so much time and, and concentration of the build process goes into the combination of this and the, the working uh, element for, or elements, many of them for the lift itself. So this can now slowly, 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 slowly pass by there it's it's rather awkward much more awkward than i would like to be for such a such a high priority thing that that's so obvious now i do like the look of this car here and it's got just a handful of stickers on it you can open up the side and the top as well and then put a sing basically a single figure in there or once again borg will also fit with the with the chair but yeah it's a whole lot of work to build this and then to make it do its thing <laughs> there's no easy crank system for it so this has to go past go past go past i'm just going to show you getting all the way up there and then the idea is you know you would bring the uh the pedestrian drawbridge 
back down as usual. You've got lots of references on the, the railing all around there because it's a perfect space to put advertisements in universe. Absolutely perfect. And there's one more mechanism over here. So for folks who are, are just walking around, you can just walk up the half spiral staircase over here or quarter spiral staircase. And then once the, the car is at the top, should be right about there. It doesn't quite go exactly where I would want it. I wish it would go just a little bit farther than that, but you can bring this down. And then I feel like that might've been my mistake. Like I might've done something just, just ever so slightly off here. I think that should be able to, to come all the way up and then line up in, in that space. Maybe the tree needed to be moved over ever so slightly, but this is, this is your ramp to get access. And if you are in a chair, then you have another way to get up there to bypass the stairs. And that's with another mechanism. This is nice. This is actually much more compact and it's pretty slick. Like that's, that's a really good little mechanism in there with the cantilever inside. It's simple. It's just a short lift. I like it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty consistent. Like it'll, it'll lock up at the top and then drop to the bottom. Just make sure that you don't uh, accidentally turn it the wrong way or you'll accidentally uh, disengage the mechanism inside. Now, speaking of disengaging mechanisms to show you the next level down, what I ought to do is take this entire walkway off. Everything here should be lifted off, which, which can be done, but it does require disengaging all of this first. This comes off as kind of its own module. It's clipped at the top. It's clipped at the bottom, fairly easy to do, but annoying. You've got the string back here as well. And it's something that I think that very, very few people will ever do in the lifespan of this. If you, if you buy this, you, you own this, uh, you know, taking that out and then taking all the top off just to see a little bit of detail in the, the few little structures along the sides here. Thankfully, the way it's designed, you don't have to do that to see detail inside. So we're going to look at the lower Ninjago city, which is the older part of it. This uses older construction techniques and is mostly white, brown, a little bit of tan and black in, in color, which really separates it visually very nicely and also gives it a, just a, a cozy traditional feel. This is a sign for a, a bakery up here, which has a, a nice build to it. And then there's a, just a little balcony over here, which has a single table outside with some, uh, some tamari and a little bit of sushi that's being eaten. But more importantly, let me swing you around to the other side so you can see the detail just a little bit better and you can get to the inside of this by simply sliding it out. That's right. This is an apartment and there it is. This is brilliant. They need to continue to do this. It requires a bunch of extra pieces, but it is worth it. And you can see part of the wall that's still inside the little, uh, uh, koi uh, painting up there. And this has the bed, a lamp, Photograph. I don't know what this represents. I think it's, I think it's supposed to be just literally uh, roller skates. I don't remember what the, what the reference is, but yeah, you know, there's not a whole lot to see here, but it sure is nice to be able to see it at all after this thing is assembled and it's easy to put that back in. What's not quite as easy is this next one over because of the way that it's built. It's tricky when you're building it at first, and then it's tricky to work with it after it's built. And like, see that part just came off right there. I don't know if I'm, if I'm doing something wrong, but it just, it's just, it's a little bit off here. You just have a wall and it's not the entire place. The whole place doesn't slide out. I'm trying to get some, some light in there so that you can see what detail is in place. It's, it's built up pretty nicely. It's enjoyable to put this space together, especially with the grandfather's clock back there on the wall on the right with the, the weight that's actually physical, you know, brick built and it's embedded into a window frame, a small window frame. That's all, that's all really well done. But, you know, you're just honestly in real life, not able to, to appreciate that much after the fact. This is cool. Just easy access to the, the, uh, the business down below. Now it's stuck. No, no. Get there. There we go. That's what we want. And then putting the wall back, just have to be careful again to make sure that parts don't uh, come apart. It's, it's no big deal, but you just have to be more careful than usual here. Down below is Kai's forge. You got the frog reference out here. There are a couple of those and just some, some crates. And this is an open sided forge, which is an actual thing. Like a, just a small little hole in the wall on the side of the street. 
you know, alley alleyway kind of forge place is actually accurate for, for even modern Japan. Not that this is this is supposed to be accurate in any way. It's it's Ninjago. It's all 100% fantasy. But, you know, it takes inspiration from some real real life stuff. And yeah, I, I, I can definitely work with that. However, they don't have any way to close it up. Like when, when the shop closes in the evening or something, there's no roll up door or anything to suggest that. And that's, that's unfortunate. You got the anvil here, uh, water for quenching. Uh, you gotta be careful with that. <laughs> and a uh, tool rack up on the side. Uh, uh, I, I guess this is just a, a coal, a uh, smaller coal forge off to the side is all that you can do for for your heat. You know, it doesn't have all that much in the way of accoutrement inside, but you get what it is and then you put a couple minifigures in at least and it really livens the place up. In contrast, over here, so we saw the, the bakery sign from up above, but down below the bakery itself, you know, you've got access from the outside with a nice book base built awning here like it's just a technique that i don't think that they've used before and it makes for another good uh, tiling you know like ceramic tiling style of of texture you can close this up when the shop closes up it's got signage outside minifigures can come up and you know be customers here and you have access to getting your employees in through the door here and also for us huge figures we can just slide the whole thing out See, this is the way it needs to be that's done right. Big old oven over there, a bunch of, of made and uh, not yet to be cooked product here. This is good. One of them is in the oven. You can see the coal back there again, using the uh, Minions hair piece to good effect. This is great. Uses a handful of additional pieces to allow that to, to be able to slide, but it is so, 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 so worth it. And this one's relatively easy to put back. Nice. And now we transition to just some some general stuff, some some environmental stuff, some structural stuff, you know, stuff to just just enjoy because it's it's there. It's part of the space, the waterway, the the plants in the water. Even one reed is approximated with a lime green katana piece there. This is nice with the brown colored roller coaster bits and some some gold pieces inside. It's just built up much more nicely than it needs to be. And I appreciate that because it's interesting. It was interesting to put it together. It feels good to have weird part usage that that actually works aesthetically and yeah, it, it definitely adds and really goes with the the whole aesthetic of of this place of this this lower area. Water is done the same way as as usual. Um, lily pads, well, Lego has many ways of doing aquatic plants, and this is just one of them. I think it's very effective. This bridge is kind of beautiful. It's kind of simple too. It didn't take too long to put it together. It's not too advanced with its techniques, but it looks great. You got the large fender pieces here, Technic pieces. And then this is just a this is just a a uh, flexible part, you know, going all the way across. Those pieces have been around for a long time, but here with the I think one of the longer lengths of that, but in the red color, plenty of space to put minifigures all along. Uh, you know, pretty decent transition there. This set does use a lot of archways in its its build instead of one by four pieces. So just like you see around the the edges down here, right? You'll see that in some other places as well. It might be peeking out, but yeah, this this is done absolutely beautiful. And there's a little cove there as well. You can see a boat is in is in the spot that's actually attached with a single stud, so I can bring that out easily, but it will stay otherwise. And this has a spot for a, a, a pilot <laughs> on the back of it, and this is just bringing some fresh produce to a market stall, or potentially being a market stall in the water of itself so that people can go shopping. Got another frog reference back here with that small produce stall. And yeah, you know, that, that works really well. It has just enough room for one minifigure to be on the other side of it, but it doesn't take up too much space and definitely adds a lot. The vines here add a lot. This structure is built up significantly. There's, there's a lot to it. Here it is from the other side. And this is another one of those trans purple colored large window pieces with a sticker over the top of it. It did not need to be trans purple. And this is just one of those, those, um, those things that the designers won't tell you about because they're not, 
technically supposed to officially do it, but they do it anyway. And it being uh, just making parts more available for custom builders. That is 100% fan service right there because they could have done that in a, a regular clear. They could have done that in a like a gray or just a solid white or something, but they put more of the trans purple in there just to put more of that into circulation. You know, that stuff goes through Bricklink and such, you know, people independently will buy these sets and part them out. And because of this designer's foresight, now there will be more of that piece and that color available. I really appreciate that. But all of the, all the little details here, uh, I should mention that these are not fully attached. They're just kind of located in place, but securely. It's not going to pop out. It's interesting the, the angle there, but all these little details are nice. Like all of that up, up above is nice. It wasn't the easiest thing to put in these, but the end result is really good. Texturing around the back. And remember, this is where the raw sewage comes out, right? This is, this is the end of the shoot. So the inside of this has to be built up as well and has to be smooth as is the, the route over to the side. So the, you know, things need to be able to slide down reliably, not get stuck, and then go down here because there's no way to clean it out. You know, unlike real sewage, sewage systems, there's no clean out involved in this. But all of that, I think, just really comes together really, really nicely. A couple of bollards at the at the end here, like it's like it's a pier. You can just imagine a boat coming up right to the to the side of this as well. And then another small structure with some vines crawling up around the outside. It's a nice little mailbox. It's a, a unique build. It's a Minecraft animal head on its side. So the, the bottom is actually facing to the, to the right, leaving that, that open slot there. And that gives it enough room to hold on to a typical Lego mail piece, which is a one by two tile. But in this case, instead of putting an envelope in there, sorry, getting it there. It's one of these collectible ninja trading card things, you know, representative of, of the real ones, but they keep coming up with different designs. And, you know, it fits in there, but it doesn't actually really get held in place. So this is definitely going to fall out if you move the building around. Just just be aware of that. It's not, uh, it's not gonna hold on to the piece. And then around the side, nice vines, uh, a little bit of access to the side of the building, you can see, imagine somebody holding onto the vine and then just kind of shimmy around here carefully, being careful not to fall into the raw sewage outside or uh, just to the outside of it. And then you can use the ladder here to get up to the upper floor. Nice, uh, nice overhang, a little bit of roof here done with the uh, individual candlestick pieces in, in black with clips on the other side. But there's also just a regular door to get into this space here again, it's, uh, it's a little bit dicey, whether you come in from this side or you come in even from over here, it's a little bit more space here, but you know, be very careful to, to watch your step for obvious reasons. Oh, uh, thankfully you probably don't have to worry about Lego goats knocking you into that water. Um, uh, but according to this, there is one that is missing now. If that's a hint that they're actually going to bring the goat back, fantastic, but I wouldn't read too much into it myself. I think it's just a, just a cheeky little reference. That's it. But the nicest thing about this is it's another one of these situations where you can pull a wall out. Now it doesn't take the whole thing out, but this is definitely easier to see inside of than many of the other spaces. You just got to get some, some light in there. It's a, it's a little general store. Sorry. It is. Well, let's see. Not the, it's, it's more open, but it's not fully open. So this is, this is a general store. Uh, lots of just random objects on the, on the wall back there on the, on the, uh, the shelves. It's strange that they have the two shelves that you're looking at right now built exactly the same way. It's very odd, a small bonsai tree off to the side and then another door. So this is the employees entrance and exit. And then that's the the, uh, the patron or customer's entry and exit, little mat there. And this over to the side is just where the, uh, the clerk would be sitting behind the counter. So the counter actually, if I can get through this way, yep, it's able to go up and down. So the clerk comes in through, through the employee spot and then they can access the floor as well. Sorry, having trouble with the lighting here just cause yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. Now there's a nice painting on the wall over there and on the wall that I removed, let's see, is there anything else? Oh yeah, just the, the bonsai tree was it. But on the wall I removed, there's also this. Now the next level up, 
Good luck with this. This is very, very compact on the inside and there's no removable wall for it. So that's what you get. <laughs> you got the bunk beds in there. Uh, RN lives here. Uh, nice poster on the wall. Lamp off to the side. Two levels, but to access that, to access this as a huge figure, as a human being, you do need to <laughs> disengage the whole cable gondola system and take apart the rest of the building above. Just remove the entire upper floors. Yeah, just to see the bed. And it doesn't seem particularly practical to me. It was nice while putting it together, but doesn't really add to the value after the fact, I think. Lastly, I'm just gonna roll us around to this side to see the landing of where the the car goes, the, the gondola, the cable thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and bring it down now. So I'm rotating this back and forth a little bit, but this is this is the process. Little by little. <laughs> There's way too much friction in it, in the system. <laughs> it's not smooth. If you wanna motorize it, you're going to change some stuff and you're going to be at great risk also of uh, breaking off the <laughs> the string at the end at the top the bottom not so much but at the top yeah you're gonna have to program that just right see how annoying this is see how much time this is taking up from in the video <laughs> so much time it takes up in real life too so eventually this comes down and it lands there now now everything is loose and you can bring down the little ramp and that lines up just fine. And this is wheelchair accessible. So people can walk here. Um, the chair can roll around here just fine. And it brings you all the way down to the lower level. There's some more signage once again on trans purple and then some more nice small details. Yet another frog there, another of the lime green katanas. And this I believe is a, is a little, uh, uh, T vendor. So these are actually printed, interestingly, printed one by ones. The containers there, the little, little boxes, that's extra deluxe, definitely going above and beyond. Uh, and then more signage outside, including for the, the general store over there. And that's just what that looked like from the opposite side. Good details overall. Not everything is completely accessible and usable though. Oh yeah, I, I should mention these too. Like these are simple builds but they look really good. They look right to me. And this is also nice to get four of these textured large door bits with the, the two bars to attach them on one side and just a plain black color. Those are gonna be useful you know, to, to get more of those out on the market. And that concludes our tour. So I'll just rotate this back around one time just for memory's sake so you can see where all we've been and how it all comes together and how it all feels when it's together. I feel like this, the spacing here in general is pretty nice. The density is pretty nice. Again, not everything is, ex is as accessible as I would like it to be. Many things are much more accessible than they've ever been for what they are and for how they're integrated. And there's plenty of space to put minifigures, you know, to at least pose minifigures in a static way for display. Now let's talk about the minifigs. Again, there are 21 of them, which to me feels pretty generous. All right, starting with the old school ninja crew, here are the latest versions of Lloyd and Nia in their battle garb. And then here's Kai as blacksmith. And I believe that's a new color. Is it not a new color? The just straight trans orange for the, for the katana. I would like to see that katana in every transparent color. Uh, we got the we got the pink previously. Actually, I would like every every piece to be made. Let me be honest about that. I would like every piece to be made in every transparent color. It just just looks really cool. It's it's that color because it's intended to be coming straight off the forge. It's a little bit awkward that it's perfectly evenly colored all the way through, evenly heated. But hey, you know he's the he's the ninja of fire. He can hold it. He's applying some heat from his hand as well. You know, use your imagination a little bit. It's cool. Detective Zane or Zane Noir finally makes an official appearance in physical form here. That's just a nice bit of, of fan service there. It's you know relatively obscured, but def definitely uh, highly loved by the fandom. So it's nice to, to get, again, an official figure for that one. And then the new ninja here, 
Sora and uh, Arin uh, with their hair pieces, hair pieces which should be included in other sets as well from the Dragon's Rising series because in the show, most of the time they don't have their hoods on. So why would they not include these in more sets? I, I was giving Lego props for starting to include hair pieces in, in sets as, as options and then it feels like they stopped. So do I need to get on their case again? Do we all need to get on their case again? I think we should for this series in particular because that is a striking color. And I think it's really cool. And I think that that's a useful hair piece also. And we need to get more of those out on the market without having to go through the bricks and minifigs uh, or excuse me, build a minifig service. Uh, I know plenty of people are, are extraordinarily fortunate to have easy local access to a Lego store, but most people don't. So stuff like that should be included in sets. Here's a better look at Dareth, as well as the first ever official appearance of Cyrus Borg as just a human being. Just a regular, normal person, just himself. That definitely took too long. You know, that's not that obscure. And uh, yeah, they definitely could have come out with him much, 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 much sooner. But definitely better late than never. This is one of his employees to, to work at the Borg store, as they refer to it. And, and you're just leaving the accessories on that are appropriate for these. Uh, Dareth, obviously, is also Elvis. <laughs> Miss Demeanor is the name of the character, named character on the left. All exclusive prints for the face, torso, hips, and legs. And the whole body there is done in gunmetal gray. It's a very striking character, and I think the flamethrower setup is pretty perfect. They even give you some extras of the red whip pieces you'll see in, in the spares. This is just a baker for the, the bakery, you know? And then this is the, the owner or operator of the, the boat that delivers some produce around Ninjago and he's got his stick there to maneuver the boat through the raw sewage of the canals and waterways of Ninjago obviously. Reporting live from Ninjago City it's Gabby Gossip with her cameraman Vinnie Folson there. Uh, also I believe the first time we've gotten these as full official figures. I don't really like the use of the hammer or the semi-custom build for the camera. I get what they were going for. I appreciate how compact it is and you know it looks a little bit more modern than some of the ones that they've done before, but eh, meh. I've heard complaints about the, the hair piece over here for, for Gabby. I kind of like it myself, but I, I'm I'm not looking at references. I really like that print on the on the back here for Vinny. I don't like the well, I do like the design of the prints for the sushimi. Not sashimi, not sushi, but sushimi chef on the right. But I really dislike the poor production quality on the front there. That white isn't. It's translucent and therefore it's pink. And I will always call that out, no matter how many Lego apologists try to attack me for it, try to put me down, try to insult me. No, I'm, I, I don't care. I pay good money for Lego and all Lego fans pay good money for these premium European products and uh, deserve to get the color that we paid for, deserve to get the color that the thing is supposed to be because Lego has shown countless times that they are perfectly capable, just like the rest of the world, of printing a color on another color. They can print white on black. They can do a really good job of it. Knockoff companies can too. Uh, they can print black on white. They can, they can print red on blue. They can print green on red. All these things are possible. So why don't they do it? At least not for the, uh, at least not coming out of the factory that supplies the North American market. Um, maybe in Europe it's perfect, but stuff that we get over here is very inconsistent and I will continue to call it out because it is a problem. Here are Hound Dog McBrag, Camille, and this is the unnamed tea vendor. I'm not up on my Ninjago lore. Can somebody please tell me, is Hound Dog McBrag not an alter ego of Clutch Powers? I mean, he looks too much like Ninjago Realm Clutch Powers. Too much. At least to me. Maybe a long lost brother or something? Is there a connection there? Because there has to be, right? It's too close. First time I saw this character show up on screen, I'm like, 
Clutch Powers is back. Wait, what? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, these figures I think are all good for what they are. It feels like this mold is getting a little bit, a little bit old, but it still has good clutch power to it. Like it's, it's very shiny. I feel like the the edges are getting a little bit, a little bit rounded over, but on the inside, it's still good. At least one of these has an alternate face. And completing the lineup, this character is Racer Seven. This is the market vendor who runs the little produce stall. And this is just called Dojo Kid. Obviously, she's gotten some ice cream from next door over in Ninjago City Gardens. Clearly, Bionicle fan here, another Bionicle reference. And it's unfortunate that that gets the fandom all riled up. Bionicle G3 confirmed. Hopefully, hopefully more folks are getting past that silliness because just taking this at face value for what it is it's it's really nice the first ever i think it is right the first ever official bionicle minifig torso is it not uh, i think for all the bionicle fans that's fantastic and then obviously she's got the old school canister and a represent representation of a of a large action figure in her hand um yeah again at face value it it's very good i just hope that it's that it's left at that i hope that it doesn't get turned into something that it isn't you know something super super annoying because just that like the whole thing is very good it is a very nice nod to the classic fans of a classic theme and then leftover pieces yeah there are a lot this really shows you just how much of this set is made of very small parts when you end up with this many uh, spares, especially given that, in my experience, many of the things that should have had spares did not. In in a number of cases where I expected to have leftovers, there there weren't any. And that's something that LEGO does seemingly randomly. I haven't found a pattern to it of, of when they don't give you extras for little tiny things. But you got some, some new prints down here and a bunch of new colors or relatively new colors and a whole extra chef's hat. Uh, it seems like just about everybody's getting these in the in their sets as spares, which, hey, that's fine. I'll take them. But, hey, I would have preferred a, a Sora, an extra Sora hair <laughs> instead. A couple of the extra red whip pieces. So, yeah, not, lots of nice, good stuff in here. And then looking at sticker sheets, plural. Here's one. All right. Here's another. Yep. Those are both white backed and then this one's clear backed. So three in total. Again, I paid $380 US for this set. It is 380 euros, 320 pounds UK, 480 Canadian dollars, which converts to approximately 365 US dollars. Relative to other things that Lego has on the market today, I feel like that's not a bad price. I think it's okay. It's a lot of money, period. It is a lot of money. But relative to current market conditions and relative to what Lego does and how they price things right now for the amount of stuff that you get here, I think that that's in a roughly reasonable range, especially when you consider the number of minifigures. This is, you're, you're talking about less than the price of two modular buildings for approximately two modular buildings worth of stuff plus more figures it it feels like to me it just the the total amount no these do not fill up their these sides do not fill up their respective base plates but there's a lot more height than you get with the modular buildings and there's definitely a lot more detail in all there's a lot of mass here there's a lot of stuff the building experience proves it through how long it took and how much it involved. That said, I feel like the design is suffering quite a bit for this thing, this gondola thing. Come on back, come on back. First of all, it doesn't work great. That's not fun. I didn't even mention the fact that if you're not careful with your finger placement over here, you're going to get a dent in your thumb where there's a nice sharp Lego piece right there. It's getting in the way. It's kind of a stopper where you want to continue to turn, but you get stopped. Like it's, it's this, ow, ow. 
I got it. Ow. 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 I'm just not saying anything because <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a little bit of pain, but it, it is a literal pain. And what do you get for that? You get, you get definitely a, a nice novelty, but you get the ability to move one minifigure back and forth. And again, the amount of build that goes into supporting this thing is outrageous in my opinion. I feel like they could have done so much more with all of the Technic stuff and all of the strengthening in here and all the strengthening. Now, some of that strengthening is could dual purpose between supporting this, its mechanism, and also the overall uh, support of the whole thing. You know, so that you can pick this up and it's not sagging. I can hold this by one hand and I feel comfortable doing this. It's not gonna fall apart. It's not gonna pull itself apart. Um, it's not gonna twist in the middle. I'm not gonna have to rebuild it. I'm gonna have to push a bunch of things down. So that's all good, but a lot of that strength comes from the upper floor here, not from this. There's a little bit of tension here, which is good. You know, good physics are going on here, but especially on this side over here, how much goes into that? And, and even just the mechanism to raise and lower the drawbridge, the pedestrian drawbridge right there is significant. I feel like that was a miss. The little spots where you can open up walls, and better yet, where you can slide entire places out that's greatness we need more of that the spots where they didn't do that and you build a bunch of interior detail and then are not able to hardly even see it anymore afterwards that's typical and not fun and it's definitely not as easy not as straightforward to take this thing off layer by layer to get to the inside if you ever want to see that inside stuff again so overall I don't feel like I got as much goodness, even though the the quantity of stuff here is, is definitely on par value-wise. The quality of stuff isn't quite there. Some of it is is really good, but a lot of there was a lot of uh, walking in place, spinning, spinning of wheels, it felt like it, putting this together. If you like what you see, get it. If you you know, if you can afford it reasonably. I don't think there are any bad surprises. I definitely didn't try to hide anything from you through this. I personally don't think that the much maligned empty space in the middle is is as bad as we thought. I think there's a good amount of good amount of room to pose minifigures. It feels comfortable enough. You're able to avoid uh, minifigures getting scared by this thing when it comes down. You know, there's still a little bit of a little bit of clearance there. I just think it could have used probably one more small market stall. Just one more, since they do call it Ninjago City Market. So it would have been nice to get one more uh, produce stand size of things somewhere down here in the, the largest flat open area. Um, really, 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 really small though. That's it, I think balance wise. Otherwise, I think it's balanced just fine. Real shame about all of Ninjago City's waterways being converted uh, canonically through this set into raw sewage ways. But otherwise, <laughs> there is a lot to like here. Uh, we need to get better quality, more consistent printing with the with the figures since Lego can do that and they do it plenty whenever they feel like it, whenever they're willing to, to, to pay for it, to turn up the dial just a little bit. Uh, lots of great pieces in this, lots of recolors. So overall, I am not as happy with this as I was with the original city or with gardens. It's probably, it's probably somewhat close to on par with docks for me. Just there's more here than with docks. Yeah, overall, generally positive experience though. I definitely would not recommend it against anyone who, who wants it. I definitely would not tell you, change your mind, think again. Nah, nah, it's not one of those situations. It's just personal opinion. Isn't as hot on this one as, as some of the ones that they've done before. Thank you very much for watching. Hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, special thanks to all the folks who uh, were very, very kind and, and supportive of what we were doing over on the, the initial Twitch stream for this. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.